Hello everyone, uh, welcome to the VQA to VLN tutorial and this is the afternoon session which is about the VLN, the Vision and Language Navigation. Okay, so we know that a long-term goal of AI research is to build intelligent agents that can see the rich visual environment around us, uh, communicate this understanding in natural language to humans and other agents and act in a physical or embodied environment. The embodied AI, where the embodied agents are trained to perform various tasks in egocentric perception, has attracted a surge of interest with computer vision, natural language processing, and robotic communities. Vision and language navigation is one fundamental topic in embodied AI that was proposed in 2018. As a recently raised research area, this topic has attracted a lot of attention. Researchers are not only focused on proposing new methodologies, for example, uh, Xin et al. actually proposed uh, an RL-based method and won the best student paper in CVPI 2019. The, but also people introduced several variant tasks and datasets. For example, uh, Chen et al. from uh, Yoff's group proposed an outdoor version of the VLN known as the Touchdown. So VLN is an emerging research area. Thus an overview of the tasks, datasets, methods, and further trends is required. So today, we will offer a half-day tutorial and try to present a comprehensive overview of this task. We will have four speakers in this tutorial. The first one is me. My name is Chi and I'm an assistant professor at the University of Adelaide. My research interests are mainly in vision and language problems and I'm especially interested in the area of visual question answering and the visual language navigation. I'm the co-author of the first VLN dataset R2R and the Reverie. Dr. Xin Wang is an assistant professor of computer science and engineering at the uh, UC Santa Cruz. His research interests include uh, natural language processing, computer vision, and machine learning with an emphasis on um, uh, build embodied AI agents that can communicate with humans using natural language to perform real-world tasks. His VLN work, uh, the RCM, won the CVPI 2019 Best Student Paper. And Dr. Yoav S. is an assistant professor in Department of Computer Science and Cornell Tech at Cornell University. He works in the intersection of natural language processing, machine learning, computer vision, and robotics. Dr. Peter Anderson is a research a scientist uh, in the language team at Google Research. His research is at the intersection of computer vision and natural language processing. His recent work has focused on grounded uh, language learning, particularly in large-scale, visually realistic 3D environments. So, there will be three major parts in our tutorial. Uh, firstly, I and Peter will present a comprehensive overview in this field, including tasks, datasets, and evaluation metrics. Then, Sing will cover a series of key methodologies, especially from the data scarcity perspective. And in the third part, Yoav and Peter will discuss the way to uh, realistic VLN through three case studies. Okay, now I will start to present the first part, mainly about the tasks, datasets, and evaluation. Well, to introduce VLN, we need to first talk about the vision and language, uh, vision and language problem, right? More precisely, computer vision and natural language. Well, computer vision and natural language are two independent research areas, but since 2015, there is a trend that tries to combine vision and language. So integrating language with vision actually expands the horizons and the tasks of the both vision and language community. For example, 
combining the image understanding task in the computer vision and the task of uh, language generation in the NLP makes the image captioning. We also can combine several general computer vision tasks and the language question answering to make the visual question answering task. And combining the image understanding with the natural language dialogue generation, we will have the task of a visual dialogue. A recent trend but is to introduce the action into the vision language framework. I named this combination as a V3A circle, which requires a machine can ask and answer questions and perform actions, all based on the visual input. The circle uh, takes a vision-based agent as a center, and we allow the agent to ask questions to another agent or human. We also require the agent has ability to answer questions and queries. At the same time, the agent needs to understand the vision, agent to agent, and agent to human conversation to perform some actions. This circle can be divided into different parts and lead to several different directions. For example, the ask part relates to the to uh, topic called visual question generation which aims to develop a model that can learn to ask high informative questions. At the answer side, it is related to the VQA and visual dialogue. The actions that a vision-based agent can perform are quite rich, actually. For example, referring and navigation. So it covers the topic of referring expression and the language-guided visual navigation, which is VLN, vision language navigation, right? So, so another version, or more precisely, an extensive version of the V3, V3A is the embodied AI, right, which is a field for solving AI problems for virtual robots that can move, see, speak, and interact in the virtual world and with other virtual robots. And these simulated robots' solutions are then transferred to the real-world robots. This is quite a hot area. So this requires an agent has ability to see, talk, listen, act, and reason. So this figure uh, actually from a survey of embodied AI summarizes the simulator and the research tasks in the field of embodied AI. The VLN task is in the middle between the object navigation and the visual navigation with priors. The first definition of the vision language navigation was given by uh, the, our pioneer VLN work published in CVPR 2018. In a VLN task, an embodied agent is placed at a spot in a photorealistic environment and the agent is called to navigate to a specific spot based on given natural language instructions. So here is a typical example. We then exit the bathroom, turn left, and exit the room using the door on the left and the width there. So here is a timeline of the VLN. The first VLN work was published in CVPR 2018. It was proposed by Peter Anderson, well, a PhD student of ACRV at that time, and me, who was doing a postdoc at ACRV at that time. So we discussed how to use uh, vision language in the robotics environment, which is now a famous embodied vision problem, right? So the first task we think of is navigation, because navigation is a more, uh, I mean, mainstream direction in the robotics. We also gave this project a name called to bring me a spoon because we think that ordering a child about five years old to take a spoon is a straightforward task. And instructing the robot to take a spoon through language instructions is very difficult. We quickly logged in to use Metapos 3D as our indoor environment and selected 90 different indoor buildings, including residences, offices, but at that time, we also had some uh, well conversations about what instructions to label at first. I advocated to to uh, instructions similar to bring me a spoon, right? I think this is more 
close to the human behavior and the practical scenarios. At the same time, specific prior knowledge is required before we can label this data. But Peter thinks that such labeling is complex for the first VLN task, and the performance cannot be guaranteed. So he voted of doing a room-to-room -room task first, only navigating to the destination room and giving more detailed instructions. It can better reflect the combination of vision and language. So we started to build a simulator, use the AMT to collect the data, and have the first VLN simulator called the Metapod 3D simulator, and the first VLN tasks and the data, the room-to-room, -room, also known as R2R. So since then, VLN has become another, uh, I mean, essential task in the VL field following image captioning, VQA, and visual dialogue. The picture of here is a roadmap of VLN in terms of tasks and the data after R2R. Uh, well, there, there is an outdoor VLN, which is a touchdown, and the dialogue-based VLN, such as CVDN, and there are also some more fine-grained annotations, such as uh, Baby, uh, baby walk, and the fine grained R two R, and the re recent R X R of course, and the Reverie, uh, which is an advanced version of the V L N. Well, it's a version most close to our initial idea, the Premier Spoon. So, in terms of the methods, there are also some variants. So, Berkeley's uh, speaker follower model, and the Golden Backbone environment dropout model and Xinwang's self-supervised uh, imitation learning and the reforms learning model, which won the CVPI 2019 Best Student paper. Okay, so everything starts from here, actually, the first VLN walk. In this walk, to collect the dataset, we first build a simulator based on the Metapos 3D dataset, consists of more than 10,000 panoramic images. They cover around 90 building scale things, uh, encompass a range of buildings including horses, apartments, hotels, and churches of varying size and complexity. We also build a simulator that can travel inside the environments and receive visual information to execute agent actions. For each building, we have a navigation graph so the agent can travel from one node to the next adjacent node. Then the fitable trajectories are determined by navigation graph, and we have a panoramic image at each navigable node. So given the above interaction uh, environment and the navigation graph, we define the first of, uh, the, we define the vision and language navigation task and propose the first uh, room to room dataset. So in this task and uh, dataset, one agent needs to navigate through the environment to find the goal location by following a natural language in, uh, in navigation instruction. We also provide a clear evaluation protocol, uh, say, for example, single test around, so the agent must choose when to stop, and the success method if uh, stopped within, within 3 meters of the goal location. There are also some other researchers proposing more metrics for this task, which I will introduce later. So here is one example from the dataset. And uh, we finally sampled the uh, 7,000 shortest passes between locations in different uh, rooms. And we collected the 21,000 instructions using AMT and the WebGL simulator interface. Totally, there are 400 people spent actually uh, 1,600 hours uh, annotating. So compared to the classic VLN task, uh, sorry, VQA task, so VLN adds active vision because the visual input is always changing during the navigation. So as a sequence-to-sequence -sequence problem, the sequences in VLN are much longer at both encoder and the decoder side, and we have a bigger domain gap between training and the, the testing set. So actually, when we started the VLN project, our longer-term target is to build a uh, unified vision language action play center. So we designed four levels of tasks. 
The first level is the room-to-room -room navigation, which we have introduced uh, in the previous slides. To then we uh, to this end, we additionally design three higher-level tasks. The second level is the visible object localization, well, which is quite like the reference pressure, but we need the agent to find a visible object by following a natural language instruction. Right. So, uh, at level three. We still want the agent to locate the object, but the object is hidden somewhere, such as in the drawer behind the curtain, so the agent is required to perform some actions, such as uh, uh, pull open to find the object. So in the final level task, the human order will be non-complete and ambiguous. So the agent needs to raise a question or query to the human or another agent so that it can finish the task. This is more like the vision dialogue navigation. Uh, well, we have seen some datasets such as HANA, CBDN are released at this level. So, well, uh, we can see actually the room to room here is just uh, at the first level. So at the level two, we formulate it as a remote object referring to question task. So the agent needs to navigate to the right place and detect the target object by following a natural language instruction. For example, bring me the blue cushion from the living room. The, the second data set I want to introduce today is an extension of the VLN. Right? So in this task, we actually uh, combine the vision language navigation and the reference expression. The new task is called as a reverie, stand for remote embodied visual reference impressions in real indoor environments. Here is a demo of the reverie task. So in a 3D simulator, a robot agent is initialized at a random location. Then it is given a natural language instruction referring to a remote object. The agent must navigate to an appropriate location and identify the target. The agent can look up, look down, and look around at each step. And here the blue cylinders indicate the nearby navigable uh, viewpoints. So finally here you need to localize the target object. So the reverie task involves both room-to-room -room navigation and the referring expression grounding, but it has uh, key differences from these tasks. So compared to the room-to-room -room task, uh, reverie actually differs in two aspects. First, the reverie uses, uh, I mean, concise high-level instructions such as the first uh, bedroom on level two. While the room-to-room -room task uses detailed, low-level uh, instructions such as go to the top of the stairs, then turn left and walk along the hallway. Secondly, the goal of the rarity task is to look to, to localize remote object. In contrast, the room to room task aims to navigate to a, a remote room, right? It's not an object object grounding problem. Well there are three main challenges. At first the appearance, the appearance varies greatly even for the same object in terms of shape, scale, or aspect ratio caused by the different robot poses. Right? Some objects are even part, partly occluded. For example, here, uh, the TV, right? sometimes it, has, it, it can be occluded by the chair. Secondly, the instruction structure is complicated involving various linguistic phenomena such as dangling modifiers, spatial relationships, and imperatives, and so on. All of our instructions are collected from AMT works other than automatic machine generated, so it is more natural, actually. As third, the instructions are with less words, but uh, more contents. On average, it's 11 words less than those of the room-to-room -room datasets, which means more difficult to get to the target room. On the second hand, about 56% instructions mention three or more objects, falling into nearly 500 different categories, which means it's more challenging to identify the target object. 
the level three is called as a hidden object localization. At this level, we want an agent to interact with the environment to find out the objects. Right? So although there is no such dataset at this moment, there are some similar tasks and datasets about the interactive vision and language navigation. Alfred is a new benchmark for connecting human language to actions, behaviors, and objects in interactive visual, uh, uh, visual environments. Planner-based expert demonstrations are, uh, are accompanied by both high and low-level human language instructions in nearly 120 indoor scenes in the AI2 saw. These demonstrations involve potential uh, observability, long action horizons, under specified natural language, and uh, irreversible actions. The dataset provides both goal level instruction and fine grained details, step by step instructions. According to the evaluation, the Alfred actually allows us to evaluate both full task and task goal condition com uh, completion. In navigation only tasks, one can only measure how far the agent is from the goal. In Alfred, we can also evaluate whether the task goal conditions have been completed. For example, that a potato has been sliced. So the level four is called ask to find. So basically we want an agent can communicate with human or other agents to help it to achieve his goal. So this is related to the dialogue based vision and language navigation. Cooperative vision and language navigation, the CVDN, is a dataset of embodied human to human dialogues situated in a simulated photorealistic human environment. The navigator asks questions of their partner, the oracle, who has privileged access to the best next steps the navigator should, should take according to a full state information shortest path planner. The dataset consists of uh, uh, more than 2,000 human to human navigation dialogues, comprising over 7,000 navigation trajectories. Uh, punctuated by question answer exchanges across eight, uh, uh, more than 80 horse scans. CVDN facilitates training agents for navigation, question answering, uh, and question asking actually. In this work, they only tested on the navigation part and formulated it as a navigation from dialogue history task. So the input is uh, ground truth dialogue history, while the output is the navigation actions. Another dialogue-based VLN is HANA. So in HANA, when the agent gets lost and becomes uh, unable to make progress, it has option of requesting assistance from HANA, which is a helper who can provide natural language and, visu and visual instructions to direct the agent towards the goals. At the test time, the agent must decide where to go and whether to request help from Anna without additional supervision. So here is an example uh, HANA task. So initially, 
the agent starts in the bedroom at the A location and is requested by a human requester to find a mark. The task is simple, just to find a mark. The agent begins, but gets lost somewhere in the bus room. It gets to the start location of the green road over here, which is actually the uh, B to request help from Anna. Upon the request, Anna assigns agent a navigation subtask described by a natural language instruction that guides the agent to a target location. And then an image of the view at that location. The agent follows instruction as a language instruction and arrives at C, where it observes a match between the target image and the current view that decides to, de to, to depart the green road. After that, it resumes the main task of the finding the mark. From this point, the agent gets lost one more step and has to query Anna for another subtask that helps it follow Blue Road and enter the kitchen. The agent successfully fulfills the task. It finally stops at the requested object, which is star here. So note that the Anna feedback is simulated using two pre-collected language assistant roads, the green road and the blue one. So uh, another data set, the where are you, the way data set, it contains 6,000 dialogues in which two humans, an observer and a, a locator, complete a cooperative localization task. So the observer is spawned at random in a 3D environment and uh, can navigate from first-person views while answering questions from the uh, locator. The locator must localize the observer in a map by, ask, uh, by asking questions and giving instructions. So based on this dataset, they define three tasks, localization from the embodied dialogue, uh, so basically localizing the observer from dialogue history, and the embodied visual dialogue, which is modeling the observer, and the cooperative localization, which is more about modeling both agents. Other than the four levels of tasks, there are also some other uh, VLN datasets. The fine green instructions enable the dataset is one of them. Well, despite the, uh, the significant progress made by recent approaches, there is little evidence that agents learn the constraint boundaries between observations and instructions. Some researcher uh, actually found that a modified self monitoring agent could achieve similar performance with and without visual information. Among other reasons, such as dataset bias, the result suggests that this agent gains little from having the two streams of information. One reason behind this is that current methods are not adequately teaching agents the relationship between perception and parts of the instructions. Because the datasets do not provide such information, agents can only use the ground truth trajectories as a learning signal. Moreover, given the lack of uh, fine grain annotation, current methods cannot evaluate the grounding process at each step as there is no ground truth signal to indicate which part of the instruction has been completed. Now, to solve this problem, Hong, uh, who is my PhD student, enhanced the R2R dataset to acquire intermediate supervision for the agents, providing a fine grained matching between sub instructions and the agent's visual perception. Well, we argue that gra uh, the uh, the granularity of the navigation task should be at the level of these sub-instructions, rather than attempting to ground a specific part of the original long and complex instructions without any direct supervision or narrow navigation progress at what level. The baby walk shared the same ideas 
by decomposing a navigation task into sub-instructions and tasks. Well, another direction of VLN is the outdoor version. So the touchdown uses an inter, uh, uh, interactive visual navigation environment based on Google Street View. The task is to find, uh, sorry, the task is to first uh, follow instructions to reach a goal position and then resolving a spatial description at the goal by identifying the location in the observed image of touchdown, a hidden teddy bear. Uh, you have the, the order of this paper will introduce this work uh, and this task with more details later. Well, talks, uh, talk the work is another outdoor VLN task and data set. So in this task, the aim is for two uh, is for two agents, a guide and a tourist, to interact with each other while the natural language in order to achieve a common goal, having the tourist navigate towards the correct location. The guide has access to a map and knows the target location, but doesn't know where the tourist is, and the tourist has a a 360 degree view of the world, but knows neither the target location on the map nor the way to it. The agents need to work together through communications in order to successfully solve the task. Well, an example uh, is shown here. So the RXR. Room across room is another recently proposed VLN dataset with more fine-grained instructions and different languages. Peter will introduce this section with more details. Thanks, Xi. I'm Peter Anderson. I'm a research scientist at Google, and it's my pleasure to introduce the final dataset called Room Across Room, or RxR. RxR differs from the previous datasets along a couple of dimensions. Firstly, it's multilingual. So it has VLN instructions in English, Hindi, and Telugu. Secondly, it's much larger, around 10 times the scale of existing data sets. And it also has fewer path biases. So compared to data sets like R2R, the paths are very much more in length and structure. And finally, RxR includes some additional types of annotations. For every instruction, we include a, an example of a human following that instruction. And we also include what's called a dense spatiotemporal grounding of words in the instruction to observations in the environment. So what does that mean exactly? Well, the easiest way to illustrate that is to look at an example of one of the annotations. And what you'll notice is that the annotators actually recorded audio instructions rather than entering text. And so this allows us to align the words in the instruction to the observations that the annotators made at the time they were uttering those words. Let's look at this example. Now you are standing in front of a closed door. Turn to your left. You can see two wooden steps. Climb the steps and walk forward by crossing a wall paint, which is to your right side. You can see an open door to your left side. Enter into it. This is a gym room. Move forward and walk till the end of. I'll stop it there. But as you can see, the alignment between words in the instructions and observations in the environment give rise to uh, lots of interesting training opportunities. In order to get that alignment, we borrowed a really nice idea from the localized narratives data set. And so what we actually did was uh, first perform an automatic transcription of the instruction audio, which uh, in the output would generate a timestamp uh, for every word in the transcription. And then we could align those timestamps and propagate them across to the manual transcription. And so this is how uh, ultimately the data set includes a timestamp for every word in every instruction that aligns to a camera pose in what's called the annotator's pose trace. And by the way, the annotation UI that was used for this task, as well as this infrastructure for aligning transcripts to pose, has all been open sourced. It's called Pangea, and it's available under the Google Research GitHub account. 
So the output of all of that is something like this. Uh, so here we show grounding of each word in the instruction to a camera pose in the context of a 3D mesh of the environment. We can also look at these uh, same types of groundings in pixel space. Uh, so here we see the guides um, instruction annotation aligned to the pixels that they looked at in terms of uh, every panorama along the path. Uh, and so we're actually tracking these observations right down to the pixel level. And similarly for the follower examples who were charged with following the instructions and generating a uh, follower pose trace. Interesting to look at some of the linguistic phenomenon, uh, phenomena in RxR versus Artua. RxR includes uh, more co-references because the instructions are longer on average. There's more sequencing. There's a greater use of allocentric relations where some object's position is uh, related to another object. And there's also this interesting uh, phenomena which we call state verification, where annotators discovered that at times it makes sense to simply describe exactly what the instruction follower should see at that time in order to verify that they're still on the correct path. Based on this RxR data set, there's two challenges that have been launched. First is the RxR challenge, in which uh, agents must be submitted that can follow these multilingual navigation instructions and in doing so navigate through a graph-based environment. There's a leaderboard available at the URL shown here. There's also the RxR habitat challenge, in which uh, agents must be submitted that follow the same instructions in the same environments but this time using the habitat simulator, which allows for low level continuous motion in the environment. And so this is a very, very challenging task, combining multilingual language understanding and visual grounding, as well as low level control in these challenging reconstructed environments. And you can see an example of what that looks like in this video. So we encourage everyone to uh, have a look at the RxR challenge and the RxR habitat challenge and submissions remain open. Thanks and I'll pass you back to Xi. Well, VLN is a complex and a challenging task which requires proper evaluation matrix. Success rate is the most straight way, a straightforward way to evaluate VLN models. So basically, we consider an episode to be a success if and only if the navigation arrow is less than 3 meters. This threshold actually allows for a margin of arrow of, a, uh, of a, about one viewpoint, yet it is uh, comfortably below the minimal starting arrow of 5 meters. So to this angle is a problem of, of recognizing the goal location. We also report uh, the success for each agent under an oracle stopping rule. That is, if the agent stopped at the closest point to the goal on each trajectory. Uh, we also define the navigation arrow as the shortest path distance in the navigation graph, graph between the agent's final position and the goal location. Well, the most recommended uh, evaluation matrix is actually SPL, which is a success weighted by path length. So in this evaluation, the trajectory length is considered. For example, if 50% of the test episodes are successful and the agent takes the optimal path to the goal in all of them, SPL is 0 0.5, right, which is the same as successful rate. But if all of the test episodes are successful, but all but the agents take the twice as long to reach the goal as it could have if it had action optimally, right? Then SPL is also 0 0.5. So as you can see, the trajectory length is considered in this evaluation. The CLS uh, is a product, uh, uh, well, CLS is a coverage weighted by the length score. It is a product of the past coverage and the length score of the agent's path with respect to the reference path. 
It mirrors how closely an agent's trajectory conforms with the entire reference path, not just a goal completion. The dynamic time wrapping is a similarity function for time series, which is long used in the uh, speech processing. It is computed by aligning elements of a reference and the uh, query series while uh, uh, preserving their order, which is ideal for the uh, VLN evaluation actually. So NDTW is a normalized dynamic time wrapping. And SDTW is successfully weighted by normalized dynamic time warping. Now comes to the classical VQA models. Uh, there are four major categories. Sequence to sequence model is always the golden baseline. Uh, there are some classical methods such as speaker follow, which is kind of uh, sequence to sequence uh, model. And attention mechanism is something you must try in the vision language and also in the vision language navigation. Some typical methods include the environment dropout and OAAM, which is known as object action aware attention model. So in this model, uh, they train the uh, they, they train an attention model to divide the instructions into object part and action part and to uh, do the vision language navigation based on those two parts separately. And the transformer is basically all you need, right? So same as anywhere. So with the pre-training, it is actually a state of art in the VLN. Classical methods include the prevalent, which is the first pre-training work for the VLN, and the recurrent BERT, which is a paper recently proposed by us in CPR 2021. Finally, the reinforced learning is always helpful. Uh, Xin will introduce uh, will intru will introduce these models with more details in the next in the next section. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks for your attention.